<coughs> okay, continuing. So um, on the agenda, we have a pink item. Uh, late, uh, this is correspondence. We'll add it to 10B of the uh, council agenda. So with that and the addition of this item, I'll take a motion to, to approve the agenda. So moved. moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Council Donaldson. All in favor? Opposed? Carriage, great. The public participation, you have four minutes. If you'd like to uh, speak at the microphone, uh, please state your name and your street. Everybody's welcome. Good evening, Council. Um, I, I hope this is a Council meeting matter. I just had two points. I wanted to first of all thank Councillor Up for getting the red lights on the Rogers cell phone tower turned off. <laughs> like they're off. <laughs> Our night sky is so much more beautiful. So I don't know what you did. Thank you. Well, I'm just glad it's not a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping they can't find the, the replacement bulb or something like that. But it's just so much nicer. Um, and then also, we um, we did have some shouldering, again, all this road business, I don't know if it's shouldering or what it, what it is on Le bon Road, they did some work up there. And I just wondered if anybody knows, again, this may not be a council meeting matter, but um, whether the material that's used is actually kind of like vetted for invasives, or whether, you know, because it just struck me, a bunch of Le bon Road residents have been picking broom for, you know, decades, and it just struck me that, yeah, there are invasives in that material that would really set the community back. Um, so I don't know if that's a question anybody has an answer to, but um, I'd be curious. Thank you. I don't have an answer to that. We'd have to um, ask staff and they can get back to us on that one. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. Um, and, and this is a very quick, happy comment. Um, I don't know whether it was maybe 30, 30 or 35 years ago when Robin started Sandwich Organics and I was involved with the BC Penny Producers. Um, the prevailing opinion was that small scale agriculture had no future, it was dead. Um, it's so exciting to see how small agriculture has proved that it's viable and uh, contributes to community in so many ways that industrial agriculture does not, and that there, there is such support for it, not just here, but um, actually across Canada, for, uh, for the, the work that small-scale farmers do that uh, increase, increases food security, develops community, takes care of the land. Um, the, our uh, community gardens are, are just sort of a, a symbol of the uh, growth and awareness and appreciation for small scale agriculture. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak at the council meeting? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, moving to page three, this is the adoption of the special council meeting of March uh, 16. I entertain a motion to adopt those uh, minutes. So moved. moved by Councillor Schiffen. Second. Seconded by Councillor Epp. Comments, questions? No? If not, I'll take a motion. Or, um, all in favor? Sorry? Opposed? Carried. And the council meeting of March 20th, this is on page uh, five of your agenda. This is the council meeting. I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Councillor Donaldson. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So receipt of the minutes. This is the Special Finance Committee Budget Meeting. Councillor Donaldson. Uh, yes, I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, the budget meeting has started a little bit later than it has in past practices, um, and we've had some cancelled meetings. Uh, we're doing our best to deliberate the financials. We can get a lot of feedback um, from the public, and we're taking those um, concerns and ideas into consideration. I want to thank my council colleagues for enduring the process. It's been uh, a learning curve 
in some respects, and we've we've had uh, some praise, a lot of criticism. You know, why are you doing it line by line, that sort of thing. We're not doing all of it line by line. We're doing some things by chunks, but it has been a learning process, and we're finding that some things are repetitive. So it's actually been a good way of thinking about how we can maybe clean up the documents a bit. Um, having a new staff member on board too, our CFO, who uh, I'm hoping will help merge some of those of those processes as well and uh, uh, categories. Um, special thanks to the staff for their patience and commitment in recording and guiding us through this process and my apologies for the last, not the last meeting like tonight or today, but the one previously where we spent four and a half hours uh, going through as people gradually left here, but we really did have to get the work done and we still are um, a little bit behind, but I, I do appreciate that staff has, you know, we kept them after their regular working hours. So um, I apologize and I appreciate the work that you've done. So you're going to move receipt? So move receipt of um, the minutes of the Special Finan uh, Finance Committee meeting of March 21st. Okay, thank you. Moved by Councillor Donaldson, seconded by anybody? Councillor Shukin, all in favor? Both carried. Thank you. Okay, the Special Community Planning Committee meeting of March 23rd. Councillor Shukin. <coughs> Thanks very much, Mayor Little. And this is the meeting um, to discuss the rezoning application for 4696 Beckingham Road. And I thought we had a really fruitful discussion, mm -hmm. explored some options, and uh, I came to a consensus at the table. So uh, thank you to my council colleagues and staff as well for the uh, report and insights. And with that, I would like to move receipt of the special community planning committee meeting of March 23rd. Okay, moved by Councillor Shukin, second by Councillor Epp. Discussion? I'll see none. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. That was unanimous. Okay, thank you. So, uh, moving on to the Mayor's update on page 23 of the Council Agenda. I just wanted to start with uh, a RISE report. So this, this means that uh, something that we've discussed in an in-camera meeting, we're bringing it out to the public uh, for full transparency. This, regard, this is in regards to the Municipal Police Unit Agreement, or MPUA, um, dated April 1st, 2022, that I signed on April 3rd um, of this month, or of last month, and the province signed it on the 27th of March. So the uh, Municipal Police Unit Agreement, or MPUA, outlines the contractual obligations. In general, it outlines the rights and responsibilities and the municipal obligations. And I just wanted to go through it, uh, this for about four or five minutes just to give you an idea of what, what is involved in this uh, because we've had a lot of discussion over the past year regarding the uh, municipal policing. So um, with that also, I wanted to tell you that Superintendent Todd Preston will be attending and presenting at our open council meeting on April 24th. Um, of this month, later on this month, to discuss uh, the details of this, but also uh, wanting to discuss what our priorities will be moving forward. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar about the discussions and, and regarding our policing and how it came to be this way, so in the Canadian Census in 2020, the, the Canadian Census of 2021 was released on February 9th, uh, 2022. It revealed that the population of Machosen had grown to 5,067. That number had risen from the Canadian Census of 2016, indicating 4,708 persons in Machosen. Uh, the province has been updating the district staff regarding uh, the uh, potential for an increase in population since at least 2020. Um, in preparation for exceeding this 5,000. So policing in Canada is sh a shared responsibility between the provincial, the federal, um, and the territorial and municipal governments. Under the Constitution of 1867, the federal government has the exclusive authority to enact legislation regarding criminal law and procedure. In addition, the federal government 
is responsible for providing a federal police force to endorse federal statutes and to protect national security. So the Constitution Act of 1867 delegates responsibility for the administration, administration of justice, which includes policing to the provincial government. Each provin province in particular has a police act that sets out the terms by which police are governed. Provinces may delegate responsibility for policing within the municipalities to, uh, within municipal boundaries to the municipality. And importantly, under the BC Police Act, municipalities with a population of 5,000 or more are responsible, unfortunately for us, for providing police services within their municipal boundaries. So in BC, uh, policing is provide, provided mainly by the RCMP, the Federal, Provincial and Municipal Services. It, uh, policing is also provided by municipal police departments and there is one First Nation self-administered police service in BC. Notably, there are integrated teams operating throughout the province. These teams provide specialized policing services and are funded and are resourced from two or more policing jurisdictions or agencies. So under the BC Poli Police Act Section 15.1, a municipality is responsible for costing for the cost of providing its police services when its population exceeds 5,000 persons. These municipalities may choose to form their own municipal police department, so that is one of, was one of our options, to contract with the municipal government for services for an existing municipal police department, or contract with the provincial government for RCMP municipal services. So as mentioned but above, the cost associated with providing these police services is now on our re responsibility, and according to the Municipal Police Unit Agreement, or MPUA, um, and the Munis Municipal Police Services Agreement, that's the agreement between the federal government and the province, the MPSA, um, we need to um, carry the responsibility and pay 70% of the cost of the service. So the District of Matrosen is eligible for the federal cost sharing of the 30%, fortunately. So in 2022, the cost per officer for RCMP in Langford was $213,988. This cost per officer includes the wages, the benefits, the vehicles, equipment, and the uniform. So uh, with the MPOA, the, the Municipal Police uh, Unit Agreement that I signed, it included reference to an Annex A, which was an outline of the total members of RCMP that we would be seeing um, in our district. And so for the effective date of, and pay close attention to the dates, April 2022 to March 2023, so the year that has just passed, we had total me total members of three in the district. April 2023 to March 2024, we'll have four police officers in the district and April 2024 to March 2025, um, a total of five members. And so that gives you an idea of the um, the municipal police unit agreement that I signed on behalf of council and the district. And uh, we just wanted to let you know about that. And as I said, uh, Superintendent Todd Preston will be joining us later on this month on April 24th to give us more details. So good news. Um, and we didn't really have a choice. So uh, we uh, deliberated and made the best choice uh, going forward. Okay. Moving on to my uh, mayor's report. I'm not gonna read it out because it's, it's uh, quite long, but just uh, briefly, the Tumuk Treaty Association negotiations, uh, they're coming uh, to a close. They're in stage five of six. Um, part of that stage five and stage, stage six was um, public outreach. And so they've had a number of open houses uh, throughout the island actually, uh, but uh, locally, Councilor Donaldson and I attended the open house in Souk, and a lot of us attended the open house in Machosen. Um, they were both well attended, lots of respectful questions and, and answers, so that was very positive. Um, the Capital Region District financial plan, so um, I sit on the board of the CRD as a representative from Machosen. Um, they have a huge budget um, of 
uh, $619 million. Um, we approved both the operating and the capital budgets. There's some details here. Um, fortunately, uh, uh, the CEO, Mr. Ted Robbins, and his crew um, will be coming to present, I think it's in May, um, uh, just to give us an idea of um, how they're spending our money and other people's money. So I, I'll, I will welcome them when they come. Okay, moving on to the announcement of the 306 bed long-term care complex in Colwood. This was very exciting, so I was, I was invited by uh, Minister Dix, um, Minister Adrian Dix and Minister uh, Mitzi Dean to attend the announcement of this facility. So this is going to be in Colwood, uh, 306 uh, beds, uh, extended care. The care home will include um, a hospice unit and a specialized unit for, of 30 beds for younger adults um, who need additional care. The, they will have an adult day, day program, um, hairdressing facilities, therapy sessions or services, uh, a bistro, as well as an adjacent daycare center, which I thought was innovative of 37 spaces. Um, and this is in addition to over 800 publicly owned and operated long-term care beds um, on Vancouver Island. So it was a very exciting day in, um, in Colwood. Uh, Mayor Doug Kobayashi uh, spoke as well as Mitzi Dean and Adrian Dix as well as Leanne Hollins from the Island Health. Okay. Um, uh, Camosun College, I've been invited by a number of the post-secondary institutions to view their campuses. I viewed um, Camosun College, the interurban campus, just parts of it last week. Um, it was really fun. If anybody wants a, a tour, we can always arrange one. It took all morning. Um, I went through the uh, Camosun Innovates Laboratory and they're very interested in, in partnering with some of our farmers actually in um, designing anything that farmers need that they're having a hard time with their infrastructure so keep that in mind. Um, I also toured the automotive center and the classrooms, the marine simulation laboratory which was absolutely fabulous and <laughs> amazing and the massage therapy laboratory and their program, their teaching classroom. I had no idea that they offered massage therapy um, schooling at Camosun. So um, that was that. And then I also had a meeting uh, with um, uh, Honorable Randall Garrison, our MP, um, at his request, and he came to Machosum, which was delightful. I always enjoy meeting with um, uh, uh, Minister um, Garrison, he's so positive, he's got some great advice and he just said uh, with good guidance and lots of advocacy just slowly stomp on so that's what we're going to do. So I thank him for his, his visit and his interest and he said any other grants that you're putting forward for the federal government please let me know so I can help shepherd them through the system. So let's keep that in mind as we go, go forward. Okay. That's it for my mayor's report. Uh, moving on to business arising. We're moving to page 27 of the uh, council agenda. This is business arising from the minutes to be considered at this meeting of the special community planning recommendations from March 23rd. Go ahead. Mayor Little. Mm -hmm. I move that council direct staff to work with the applicants on an open house for the rezoning application at 4696 Beckingham Road, and that staff coordinate a council site visit on that property. That council continue to work with the applicant on the density question related to the four further proposed lots. And further that, the committee continue to assess options for the appropriate zoning and OCP amendments for the proposal in terms of option one and option two that were presented that day. Okay. So moved. That's moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Councillor Epp. Discussion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, thank you. So, reports for action. Uh, this is. Okay, so we have a staff report uh, the request for the development variance permit at 4990 Ireland Place. Uh, did you want to present, um, Sue Lynn? 
regarding the recommendation. Mm -hmm. I have no intention of presenting that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, that, uh, I'll do it. So the recommendation is that council approve the variance permit to enable the construction of a new accessory building at 4990 Ireland Place that reduces the front yard setback from 7.5 meters to 3.3 meters under section 58.6A of the Machosan Land Use Bylaw 1995 Bylaw 259. Move. Uh, well, I think uh, there really wasn't any problem with this application, so I will move the recommendation. Okay. Moved by Councillor Epp, seconded by Councillor Shukin. Discussion. Councillor Epp, did you want to start? I uh, know we went and had a site visit and uh, we're showing around the property and it's a, it's a very reasonable uh, request to, to just, you know, it's just the way the property is situated where the front of the property is actually side of the property and so on and so forth. Anyway, if it was if it was just a different address on the on the other other road, then it would be no problem. So, you know, it really uh, it really is uh, is just fine. Okay, Councillor Shuka. Yeah, and I echo what uh, Councillor App is saying. Um, we met with the property owners who I see are here as well today. It seems like a very responsible approach to their building, and uh, fully support the variance. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Anybody else wish to? Yeah, I, I agree as well, and I'll, I'll be supporting the motion. Um, what is interesting to note is that they will be building in this, it is starting at the same place where the existing sheds are, so the foundation is there, they'll probably have to put a new one in, and then going um, uh, out from there. Um, and they're very cognizant of the wetlands on the property, including um, close to the building, so there'll be some remediation. and. I, I did see that you know there was already some drainage stuff that they were working on. So, with you know working with our new building inspector, and that I'm, I'm confident this will uh, work out well for this this family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I guess I just want to uh, say a word of thanks to Catherine Lucicia and our planner for her report. And I agree with um, what Councillor Epp has just spoken about. And also, I am pleased to see that an accessory building of this nature. As Catherine writes, requires the registration of this Section 219 covenant prohibiting residential use of the building. So that's a, a good thing to, to have um, included as well. So very pleased to support the motion. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So that the, just for everybody who didn't uh, read this, so that we, uh, the applicants have a, a vintage car that's under um, a, a tarmac uh, right now that they hope to enclose or to put in this building, it won't be used for a residence. It, I was really pleased uh, going out to the site visit and, and really we always must go for a site visit. It's, it makes such an impact and we could actually see for ourselves why they couldn't move the building this way and that way. And, and I agree with Councillor Epp, this was, this was uh, well worth our effort to go out and see and, and I support this motion as well. Okay, any other comments? No? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. So that's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Okay, the let's see what do we have? And and just noting that of the correspondence from Joni and Jim Challenger, uh, neighbors in support of the application that was is on our correspondence. Moving to reports for information on page 41, we have the bylaw animal care services. Uh, the invoice and a summary report. Did anybody have any comments or questions? Yeah, Councillor Donaldson. Yeah, I just had a question under the um, the totals of the livestock. Is this anything related to the um, concerns we're having with what the conservation officers are working with? There's probably oh, only four here, but I don't know what it really means. You know. Uh, probably, but don't forget this is just to February. Okay. Yeah, it was just to February. If you're referring to the cougar kills mm -hmm. um, of the lambs, I think that was mostly in March. Um, but that's what I think it is. I don't know. Anybody else? No? Okay. So, see, seeing none, I will. Um, take a motion to receive uh, this uh, animal care services report. Move to receive. 
Moved by Councillor Dalton, seconded by anybody? Epp. <laughs> Councillor Epp. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Great. And then correspondence for information. We have a, a letter from the District of Highlands. Um, this is support of Esquimalt's motion um, and resolution to reduce uh, and lower speeds within their municipality. So the uh, District of Highlands is supporting um, a letter to be sent to Minister Fleming, the Transportation and Infrastructure Minister regarding this. I think we've talked about this, haven't we, Councillor Rapp, already? Uh, if it's the same one. Yeah, <coughs> it was the, the original letter from Barb Desjardins. Great. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I'll take a motion to receive unless somebody wants to speak to this. No? Okay, motion to receive. So moved. From Councillor Shukin, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Great. Okay, bylaws. Uh, this is on page 47. Um, uh, code of conduct. Okay. So um, the Code of Conduct is a written document that sh sets shared expectations for conduct of behavior. Municipal councils and regional district boards are required to consider adopting and updating a Code of Conduct following a general local election. We have adopted uh, the previous council's uh, Code of Conduct, so that is in place. This is a refinement of that Code of Conduct. Um, what uh, we heard uh, when we're, we're actually going through this procedure at the CRD now, um, uh, adopting a code of conduct and what they said to us was don't rush. This is an important document and the process of discussing it is as important as the actual code of conduct. Okay, so turning to page 47, um, this is a, um, a report from Su Lin. So then did you want me to speak to it or did you want to speak to it? Um, I don't have anything more to add to it. And just really in brief that this is one of the requirements that was brought in by the province um, for council to consider uh, code of conduct. So this is in front of you in the form of a bylaw, so make it a little more um, um, uh, enforceable, if you will. So um, other than that is so the current the current code of conduct that we have in place is just a policy. So this is, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's a it's an important file for our council's consideration. So. Okay. Mary. Mary. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Shuker. So my question to Sue Lin from you. Mm -hmm. So Sue Lin, mm -hmm. have we by through you bringing this to us, mm -hmm. have we met the provincial requirement of considering a code of conduct? by having it at the table, like that. Yes, so oh. that's why you're doing it. Right, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Okay, do you have another question for Suleen? Uh, not a question, I was just going to um, <coughs> move that council give first reading to bylaw number 682. I'll second that. Okay, so discussion, uh, Councillor Shukin. Thanks very much. Um, I will be voting against the motion, and if it happens to fail, I would actually move or be willing to move that we just simply postpone consideration of this uh, of the code of conduct until an upcoming meeting. Uh, I do have a number of concerns with sections eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and, and but I but I haven't really had a chance to actually look at those as closely as I want to, but and there are some other things throughout this um, that I that I would hope to have a closer look at. And the reason I might I, I don't want to support the motion right now and postpone it to another day is we're consumed with budget stuff as more so as staff as well, and there is time to consider this much mm -hmm. more fully. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's that's fine. Uh, so what I'm hearing is you're not opposed to a code of conduct yeah. or adopting a more refined code of conduct, but you want some time to digest. You've got some questions, and uh, that's that's fine. That's fine. As I say, the process is as important as the document itself. Yes. I've got a number of questions myself. Um, as well, so um, does uh, why don't we just call the question on that, and we can continue discussing. Oops, sorry, 
Yeah, go I'd ahead. Like to speak in favor of the motion, if I may. Okay, sure. So I'll speak in favor of the motion uh, because it's my belief that we must hold, uphold the respectful workplace at this table, in camera, with staff, amongst council and the public, including on social media. Let's do it. We now have a respectful workplace policy, and tonight I would like us to pass the code of conduct bylaw in front of us. I was disappointed last week to hear from Selby Saluki and his allegations of disrespectful behavior towards the mayor. I really hope we can get to the bottom of those allegations. But th this evening I want to talk point about... Point of order, point of order. Um, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Th those, Your point? Um, the allegations, sorry. Mm -hmm. Councillor Gray is referring to somebody who spoke uh, but did not mention any names and certainly didn't mention Mary Little in terms of, in terms of allegations of wrongdoing or misbehavior, as I, as I recall. Okay. So, Sorry. So you're, uh, you're I said allegations of disrespectful behavior towards the mayor. That is what he spoke about. Okay, so... I so apologize. I apologize. Okay, just... Uh, Can I continue? Sorry. Yes, I apologize. I misheard that. Thank you. No, it's completely, I'm perfectly fine with that. It was pretty upsetting uh, to me to hear that going on in, in our meeting and the lack of decorum at the meeting. But this evening I want to talk about respectful behavior towards our staff. I draw the public's attention to what happened during our special finance meeting on March 21st. Please take some time to review the video on YouTube at, as council discussed our staffing situation starting at 2 minutes and 17 seconds. This was an open meeting, but very few people um, of public in attendance. Discussion on staffing starts at 2 minutes and 17 seconds and ends at 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Councillor Gray, not satisfied I'm going to uh, call a point of order, uh, Councillor Gray. I don't think this is the place for you to air your grievances. What we're trying to do is we've all decided that we want to refine our code of conduct. Um, there are many instances where we know that we have to refine our code of conduct. I don't think it's a good place to start uh, with the process of adopting a code of conduct with allegations um, and uh, with you bringing up issues that may or may not have any relevance. I don't think this is the place for this. Um, and I would ask you to speak to the motion um, that uh, Councillor Epp had put forward um, and you've seconded it. Uh, we've already had one Councillor that won't um, support the motion. I won't support the motion as well because I don't think we've had adequate time to talk to it, talk about it, but I don't think it is wise for us nor positive for you to start off with allegations. And I would, I don't think that leads to respect or congeniality or collegial nature at this table. Certainly what I'm speaking about is the lack of respect um, directed towards staff at that meeting. And that's what we're trying to improve with the code of conduct of the council. So I'm speaking directly to the motion that I want to see this motion passed because I want to see better and more respectful treatment of our staff. Actions speak louder than words. And um, the difficulty that we've been having, I got a lot to learn about being a counselor, of course, and how to respond in situations like that particular meeting. And I wish I'd intervened at the time. I'm new to the job and it's not the first mistake I've made. But in the final analysis, I uh, think we have a hope of succeeding as a council. I don't think we have a hope if we don't have better uh, respect of our staff, no matter who they are. And this, this document that we're looking at tonight is all about respectful behavior, not just to ourselves, but also to our staff. And for me to reference that discussion is simply to point out, we need to do better. We, you can watch it on a video, you can see what was said and what was done. Now I heard that during the um, election, someone came into the chambers to vote on the way out, said to the staff, we'll have you all fired. We need to have, a, uh, I hope that's not what we're seeing in slow motion before our eyes with our new council. Our staff are extremely valuable individuals who've been busting their butts for us. They deserve our utmost respect for all that they're doing to serve this council and our community, no matter your political bent and who you supported in the election. So for me, this idea of respect for staff is fundamental. And it's no news to people who work for me um, or with me that I feel we must be respectful of the workforce. And I'm struggling now with what's been going on. 
And I think that this is a, the, actually the time to talk about it because the dynamics of, in the council, well, I've been heard now there's a rumor being spread around that I'm running, you know, trying to unseat the mayor. It's like people don't understand. It's so bizarre to me. The rumors that are going around are not respectful, they're not dignified, they're not true. We're a small community and dividing us by spreading rumors is not a good idea. I want us to pull together through our differences. We are voted in by our supporters, but we are obligated to work for the community. And I, I don't people understand that the mayor's hired for, elected for four years. I'm elected as a councillor for four years. Well, I don't get why people don't understand that. With respect, the mayor knows better than anybody. The job of the mayor is extremely complex undertaking and, and a more than full-time engagement. I'm not qualified to hold that position without more experience. If anyone asks, you can see you heard it from me. I want this mayor and our mayor and this council to succeed. That doesn't mean I'm not going to ask tough questions, call my fellow councillors, members to account and vote according to my values and commitments. I don't know how Johnny Carline's article in the Muse got this all started, but we need the, to write the dysfunction. I'm looking forward to the anti-bullying workshop and the council dynamics workshop, but a lot of that's based on this bylaw. Um, if all the measures you know, don't help us improve, I'm open to you know, conflict resolution professional, anything at all. I guess I just want to get start making a step down this path and make things better. And I'm surprised we've had this. This was given to us uh, before it was provided to the public for us to read and go through. And I don't see why we, we wouldn't be discussing the details tonight. Okay, so um, I'd like to comment on that. And I've got more comments. So we are going to discuss it tonight. Who says we're not going to discuss it tonight? Uh, what what uh, Councillor Shukin has said is he's not prepared to adopt it this evening. That doesn't mean we're not going to talk about it. Okay? Um, and um, yeah, I think I should stop there. Uh, Councillor Donaldson. Um, yes. Um, when we, when we uh, just before we had our inaugural meeting, uh, we actually all agreed, I believe, and somebody will correct me, I'm sure, that we didn't really feel that our code of conduct that we have currently uh, had enough meat in it, so to speak. Um, it's pretty lean, and we did look at a few others that were in the works, and I've gone online and looked at a few others. Um, and so we, we signed it, along with our oath, in front of the public, and we have been working with that document. Uh, so we have what we call the code of conduct, um, and we're, I believe, within those six months still okay with that. I myself would like to have more time to go through this and deliberate with uh, my council colleagues to decipher um, each section of this code of conduct and, and see if this is the one that's going to suit the chosen council. Um, I don't know where all of the information has come from. I have read a few of the other municipalities' code of conducts. Some of them are very interesting, some of them are just full of legalese that don't make a lot of sense to me, but that's just because of my comprehension. Um, so I would like more time to, to be able to go through um, components of this and to understand fully what is uh, in it and uh, make sure we have a, a really solid document that's reflective uh, from a chosen council. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Councillor, did you want to say anything? Uh, well, I. Uh, I made the motion because I think it's really well done and really comprehensive, and, and I would like to get on with it as well. So, okay. So, um, how about if we call the question? Uh, we can put uh, whatever uh, the results are. We can continue to talk about it. Um, and I've got a number of comments and questions that I would like to have brought back to staff, actually. Um, so, if, since we have a motion on the table, I'm going to call the question, then we can continue discussion. Okay, with that, call the question. So, the uh, uh, motion was to give first, second, third reading. Yes, first reading. Sorry? First Just reading. Just for first reading. Uh, to give first reading to the bylaw 682. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. So continue, the motion fails. Uh, okay, so the um, let's go through it and discuss it. Um, as I said, this is the process is important for us to discuss it. We have very little chance as a community at a, as a community of council, uh, the council of the whole, to discuss 
um, except for in um, an open meeting and for specific reasons in a closed meeting. So this is our opportunity. All of us have um, said that we we think that the code of conduct is in, important. Um, just by having two pages of prepared speech and everybody doesn't have that, doesn't mean that, that just one counselor is emboldened by this. Everybody has committed to Point of order. Yeah, go ahead. What's personal your attack. It's not a personal attack. It's not a personal attack. Um, I'm saying that just because you say um, and cite reasons that we need a code of conduct doesn't mean that everybody else feels as passionate about that. You, you pit one person against the other. It's not. This is a council. And for us to move forward, I think we, people should stop the grandstanding. And, and we should move forward as one. Um, everybody has agreed to that. Let's, let's all agree. And then let's start moving forward, looking at this code of conduct. It, it came with some expense from the community, from the, the, the staff. This, the legal counsel has gone through this. They've suggested, I think some of this anyways, it has been vetted in a couple of communities, um, but I have some questions. I know that you had some as well. Who wants to start? Yeah. I'll just Go ahead. say that I think that I'm not grandstanding, and if I prepare with some written notes, that's fine. You had written, we all have written notes, and we want them for the occasion. We've all had this document in hand for about a week and a half or two weeks now. So I prepared for the meeting. It's not improper to prepare for meetings. No, it's not improper, but it is improper to grandstand. Okay, continue. Excuse me. Who's, what, what do you mean by that? Um, it's sort of like pontificating. It, it, it feels like you're lecturing to us. Um, and we all agree that the code of conduct is important. So uh, it's your tone, actually. It's like what your wife said at our place. It's your tone sometimes that I think you can take Point the edge off. Mary Little, I, I just want to mention, I, I think that's a, that's a personal statement about Councilor Gray that probably doesn't belong here right now. Okay. So, um, Mary Little, I, I, I would move that we postpone discussion of the Code of Conduct until an upcoming meeting. Okay. And I would make that motion just understanding that there's some tension at the table and um, I do recognize we've had this for some time, but there have been other things going on. I actually think that staff probably would appreciate a bit of a break with this as well, and I, I think we do have the time. Okay. I recognize that. Please feel free to vote against it if you feel the need to talk. Okay, so it's that's just, that's so your motion. So the motion is to postpone this uh, for another meeting. This is, I would second that motion. Second that motion. Any other discussion on that? I move an amendment. Uh, go ahead. Um, can we, I'd like to have this discussed at our next meeting. Uh, the, our next meeting I move would that this be, motion be discussed at our next council meeting. That would be April uh, 24th. Um, I'm not sure about the next meeting because I can't remember what I know we have Inspector Superintendent Todd Preston. I don't know what else is at that meeting. Do you remember, Tina? No. Okay, so um, how about if we have it at the next meeting or the meeting after if it can't be accommodated? Fine. Okay, so anybody else wish to speak to that? No? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Good, thanks. Uh, let's see what else we have. Okay, there's no other business. Uh, we have question period if it begins before 9.30 up to 20 minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, go ahead. You have to come to the microphone. Yeah, no, I get uh, Nicole, she can move on to her resume. I was at the budget meeting that um, Councillor Gray's referring to, and I just honestly don't understand what uh, the behavior was that was being called into question. I was at the whole meeting. Don't actually want to hear Councillor Gray because I don't want to give more oxygen to the tension that's that we've been listening to here in the room. But um, I will review the video. But I was at the meeting and just don't didn't see any um, misbehavior towards staff like at all. I was okay. interrupted, so I didn't finish explaining. No. Anybody else? Um, uh, Kathy Atherton, uh, Lebon Road. Um, 
Now, this is not a this is not a question. <laughs> this is not a question. This is a statement I had prepared to read at the beginning, and I didn't um, I didn't read the agenda properly, and I thought and I missed the fact that this was coming. Uh, the bylaw 682 discussion was coming at the very end of the meeting, so I suddenly thought it wasn't appropriate to read my letter tonight because I thought it didn't pertain to anything. But I'm going to ask you if I would please have permission from all of you, um, in the light of what just transpired at the table, uh, to please read my letter in public to you all. Sure. Mm -hmm. Are you all in agreement? Yes. Sure. Councillor Gray? Could you move closer to the microphone? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so, dear Mayor Little and Council, in October 2022, during the course of the electoral campaign for Municipal Council, each one of you, uh, get this up, uh, campaigned on a platform of re establishing a transparent, respectful, collaborative working environment on Council. Individually, each one of you brings different strengths and backgrounds to the table. Collectively, you share the same values of wishing to protect nature, enforce bylaws, support our agricultural base, keep Machosan rural, and foster a respectful environment on council. However, I am sad to say that is not always the council that I see before me today. I believe I am not alone in having observed that there appear to be some challenges of communication and interaction within Council as a whole. Therefore, I applaud seeing on the agenda today in the Code of Conduct Bylaw 682 a commitment to adhere to the principles of integrity, accountability, respect, leadership, and collaboration. The stated purpose of Bylaw 682 is to establish standards for council members regarding interactions with staff, external expert volunteers, advisory board members, and perhaps, most importantly, each other. Furthermore, it provides a consistent approach to handle breach of said standards. The emphasis to conduct business in a transparent, efficient, accountable, and respectful fashion. I ask you to please support each other. As respected community members, even when you may disagree on matters of business, it is inevitable and even desirable that you will disagree with each other at times, and you should feel comfortable to express your opinions. That is the mark of good governance. However, in the event of those inevitable disagreements, Bylaw 682 states that council members shall refrain from disparaging remarks about other council members or council's processes and decisions, whether in camera or in public meetings or out at the community in, at large. I was pleased to see a comprehensive process of complaints outlined, ranging from an individual to a mutual resolution process for parties to follow. It is my hope that there will be some really meaningful dialogue among the current council to address any differences and misunderstandings that may have arisen in the past, <coughs> such as they can move forward and coalesce to become the best version of themselves and that we elected to work together in the best interests of Machosan. I am deeply grateful to all five members of council who ran for election and are now conducting the district's business on our behalf. The pay is modest, the hours long, the phone calls are even longer. There are so many pressing issues affecting the chosen from the outside world. Please let us not sabotage ourselves from within. Most respectfully to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Kathy? Go ahead. You have to come back to the mic if you want to say something else. Oh, sorry. You want? To did you, Did you want to say something else? No. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks, Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Anybody else like to say anything? Nelson, William Head Road, and I must apologize first for I, I won't be able to say things as, as 
as well. And thank you very much for, for reading that. That, that was uh, all of my chosen is uh, is hoping, and I mean desperately hoping that council can can resolve these problems that are that are occurring. Uh, especially because we we all know that you you love my chosen and you care about it in the good ways. So uh, to to see uh, the conflicts that are happening and uh, it, it's so distressing. And uh, I I hope that uh, it, it, it I know all of you want to work together and yet there's something that happens between you that that uh, makes it so difficult. I, I, I feel that you need some sort of help with this, some sort of conflict resolution, help of, of some sort, uh, uh, because it, this is so important for my chosen that uh, uh, you, you, you can respect each other and treat each other with respect. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. And if my, I may uh, follow on what uh, Katie just said, um, I know this is difficult for all of you. Um, I actually think it was healthy that there was dissension arise publicly, um, because I don't think it's healthy to go along presenting, pretending that things are okay. Um, it's actually okay that things aren't okay because there is a need for, people, for any group to learn to work together. So I, I support you in the journey that you have ahead in learning to work together and if, if you collectively feel that you might um, engage some other help in, in figuring out how to do that because it's not simple. It's not something we're born knowing how to do. I really encourage you to take that step and don't feel any shame or, or inadequacy in doing so. To me, it shows responsibility and maturity to recognize when help will be helpful. Thank you. So to that end, uh, we have engaged a, um, a speaker who will come to and speak to both council and staff later this month. Um, and then in the afternoon session, the um, facilitator will be working just with council. So that has already been um, secured. That took a few, um, probably about eight weeks uh, to uh, define a, a time. And, um, and so that will be happening later Very this fun. month. Congratulations. Anybody else have any other comments or questions? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Councillor Sh uh, sorry, <laughs> Donaldson, seconded by Councillor Shukin. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you.